Hey there, everybody. Thanks for joining me for another one-man review. Today I'll be looking at Insula Volume 1 by Vincent Longhi. This is by Fidel. I, I don't know. Someone someone who speaks French. How am I supposed to pronounce that? Uh, Fideli is a small press and risograph printing studio based in Paris, France. I didn't get this from them. I got this from Glacier Bay. I ordered a bunch of stuff from Glacier Bay. I didn't realize they were also working as a distributor or store. I thought this was all Glacier Bay stuff. But this is fine. This is cool. It's a beautiful little risograph book uh, printed in both French and English. So I quite like that. They've got French up here and English here, which is nice that the we didn't have to have this translated. I can still just get a copy of it. I think I'm not sure why I, I'm not sure what in the content of the book caused them to put the the words over here and the pictures over here. I don't know if that's just because they were trying to be bilingual or if that's a decision the artist made. I, I think this book probably would have been more effective had it been like French up here and English down here, but then I guess people would maybe relate them to pictures. Um, you know, that this is related to this picture and not this one as well. I, I, I'm not sure what the decision making there was. It's, it's well designed, it looks really nice. But it's just a strange decision to me. But it works fine as a reading experience. Um, this is a beautiful risograph where I don't know how many colors they've got at play in this book, but it's more than just three. Now they're, they're using every ink in the machine as far as I can tell. Uh, so you've got all of this art over here was gorgeous. And then you have the story happening on the side. So it's a bit like an illustrated book, um, but you always have these two panels here. And the art in these panels are just phenomenal, especially the use of color and shape. And th this is, it looks to me like this was done by someone who really knows the risograph process through and through and knows how to prepare art. The art seems all real based around what's going to happen when these inks pile up. It's based around the dot patterns that you get in the risograph. Um, it, you know, like these kind of spray paint looking effects, all that type of thing is part of the art. So that suggests that it's not just someone who's choosing risograph because it's cheap. It's someone who's really using it as an art medium. And, and you can see on this page, this had to be more than three colors. So this definitely doesn't seem cheap. This seems like someone who's done an expensive, complex print job with this. So that's really cool. I was I was uh, lucky enough to be reading this outside on, on the hammock with the sunlight coming right on the pages. And man, it really made the colors like extra juicy and gorgeous and beautiful. And the way like the, this ink printed on top of that ink shows up outside, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, so that's, that's the art. I, there's some places where line creeps in. I'll show one later where I think that the artist is uh, less effective with line than they are with these areas of color and the abstraction, but still it's, it's cool. This is a volume one. I was starting to get a sense of what the story is by the end of volume one. And now I'm really hoping that there are more volumes that have been completed or will be being completed because I've, I've started to figure out, I think what the story is about and I'm getting sucked into it. There's this uh, ergo rhythm that people, this is like a sci-fi story basically. And it, it starts with a study on happiness. It, it, the aim was to justify the exponential growth of the population as opposed to the free fall of individual well-being. And there's some kind of technology that gets put in there. The algorithm induces uh, the sensation of a fleeting migraine as if a silk thread piercing through the skull. So there's, there's some kind of uh, implant that they're getting, some kind of VR Aug not VR, but AR, augmented reality implant that's being put into them that's alternating their experiences. And you can see some of those effects here. And just, again, this the intensity of color from these risograph inks, when, especially when they're not like blown out uh, into dot patterns, you get the purity of the inks, really beautiful. So anyways, you have this character who's got one of these devices implanted into her head and, it, and is having some experiences with it. I probably need to read it a second time because I, I figured it out more what was going on by the end of the book. Um, but you have this character and then she's basically uh, gets attacked and goes on the run. I do like this right here. All of a sudden this page got activated. There's You're starting to see some things show up on this page that matter to the story. Like there's a line here 
and then the autofocus goes on. So the autofocus seems to be a feature of this implant that will help AI will help you find when in danger, the ergo rhythm makes a selection of helpful elements. This is a feature known as autofocus. So here it blurs out the whole world and it's like, hey, get to that building. And I really like that idea. It's scary to me, I, but I, I find it feasible that we're headed that way. And then also just the art for representing that I think is awesome. Makes just phenomenal use of the technology available. Um, so as we go later, then, you know, someone comes in, this man comes in to, to save this woman who has something going wrong. Again, I was a little confused on the story until the end. I, I need to go reread it. I just don't have time to read everything three times. But um, this man's coming in to save her. In this area here, I think when the more line art gets introduced, the artwork's a little clumsier to me. I, I think this artist worked better with, like I said, with the areas of color. Um, so, but, when, but there's also parts like this where the line works fine and reminds me of, a lot of the Oliver, or, or sorry, Olivier Schrauen's artwork. So I think that's a primary influence. And some of the colors that you get with the risograph colors show up in Schrauen's work as well. Uh, and in here you, you get really, this is what I'm saying, by the end of the book, you actually understand the world. It's kind of one of these things where you're thrown in like the character and you're figuring out as you go. So that's why I feel like I should probably re read it a couple more times now that I've gotten to the end and I see the bigger picture a little better. But this guy is explaining that he's uh, one of 10. So he's almost like a print, which I think is cool given that risographs are, are almost a, like limited edition type of things. This guy's like a pressing one of 10 of a certain person. Uh, and he, the woman, Claire, who, who's like the main character that we've been dealing with, is one of 120 Claire Sentinels deployed on two insula islands in order to improve the capacities of the ER, the, the, the ergo rhythm that they're putting in there. So they're also explaining that in the society they go through these cycles and each cycle has like a different technological thing that they're trying to accomplish. And part of one of the current cycles is to... Uh, get these ER, the er ergo rhythm systems right. And so this, this character then has obviously been cl cloned to be someone who tests that. And then now they're going to come and gather her information to make decisions with, and he's, he's trying to help her. So that's what it leaves off on a, cl uh, on a, a cliffhanger like that. And really, really has me like excited for volume two. So as soon as I'm done making this video, I'm going to go get on the Instagrams. Probably should have done ahead of time but I'm going to be looking up Vincent Longhi and I'll definitely be looking up Fidel editions. The only thing that's strange about this is given like what a lovingly crafted book it is, the cover's kind of like poorly designed. It has none of the sense of the like wonderful colors that are on the inside. And it's like this kind of crappy laminated cover. So this all looks amazing, but this, this was a little uh, thrown together looking I think compared to the rest of the inside but I'm definitely on board for however many more volumes of this there are and I got to figure out how to get a hold of them so definitely suggest going out and picking this up I think it's a beautiful book it's one of those kinds of things where you know people are really pushing pushing what comics are and what they can look like and I think we should support that if you enjoy what we're doing here on the channel the best ways to support us are through our Patreon. There's a couple levels of support that you could give there that come with different voting and prizes you can win, access to different content. We always appreciate that. That helps us buy some of the books that we review. Uh, and then the best thing you can do is support what Sean's doing with Living the Line Publishing. So we'll take a look at some of the products that he has out now. The Exile by Eric Creek is a gorgeously illustrated Viking saga of revenge. Eric Creek calls it his Viking Western. It's about a, a guy who's been away on the, the war path and is returning home um, to uh, some family troubles that have to be resolved. And this is told in just this amazing, like, kind of three color art style that looks like old woodblock cuts or something. It's an absolutely gorgeous book that you've got to pick up. Centralia is an awesome, gorgeous uh, comic by Rising Dutch Star. Neil Vanapeet. This is his first work. It's a really great sci-fi story. There's a world in the future where the sun has gotten so hot that people can't be on the ground, uh, so they have to run around. There's a lot of conceits that go with that. You know, what is a world that that looks like? Um, and I think you can see by the art that Sean's description of this book as like a 
Moebius for young adults, a YA Moebius is a really great description of this really gorgeous and like wild, wacky, fun book. Thanks for following along. Take it away, Jack. You want to see all these books? Smash 